Hello, welcome to Pathagonia. This is Jay. Today we're going to talk about diseases of the nipple with using excellent Kurtz notes. We're going to talk about one malignant entity and three benign entities. So let's begin with the malignant entity, Paget disease of the breast. So this involves the nipple epidermis and you'll have an intraepidermal proliferation of malignant glandular epithelial cells in the nipple areolar region. These cells will have prominent nucleoli. They'll have this pale cytoplasm compared to the benign background epidermis. It may form glandular structures and may contain mucin. Now, your biggest differential is squamous cell carcinoma in situ, toker cell hyperplasia, and melanoma in situ. If you're unsure, you can do IHCs, and the big IHC, in my opinion, is the HER2, um, as Dr. Shabert bolts here. HER2 is positive in most cases. Uh, CK7 will be positive, usually ER negative. So when you compare it with squamous cell carcinoma in situ, it won't be HER2 positive. If you're thinking toker cell hyperplasia, it can be CK7 positive, but not HER2 positive. And melanoma in situ, you can always get a, a SOX10 or S100. In terms of etiology, a patches disease of the breast is thought to be a cutaneous extension of DCIS or invasive carcinoma. Now, clinically, the nipple will be erythematous, eroded, and crusted. And here is a clinical picture of patches disease in the nipple. All right, let's go to benign entities. Nipple adenoma. The biggest takeaway for nipple adenoma is it can look malignant, as you can see here. So don't confuse it for malignancy. So this is a relatively well-circumscribed benign epithelial proliferation of the superficial duct orifices. It's relatively, it's, it's rare, and it can mimic pagets because it's often erythematous connecting to the surface. Um, it can look scary because it could look like DCIS, it could look like florid UDH, uh, it can look somewhat papillomatous, and especially where there's like stromal fibrosis, the, epi the epithelium can look infiltrative and can mimic a carcinoma. Uh, luckily, if you're unsure, you can order an IHC and there will be myoepithelial cells surrounding the ducts. All right, let's go to syringomatous tumor. This is a benign infiltrative tumor resembling a cutaneous syringoma. Remember, tying it with dermpath, syringoma is one of the four Paisley tie differentials. My acronym I use is dapper, manly men, sport, Paisley ties. D is desmoplastic trichoepithelioma. Manly is morpheiform basal cell carcinoma or infiltrative basal cell carcinoma. They're the same thing. Microcystic adnexal carcinoma and sport syringoma. So it kind of looks like these a tadpole shaped epithelium with comma like tails. And it's a locally infiltrative tumor in the dermis and smooth muscle of the nipple and areola. The cells cytologically can look glandular and squamous, but they are bland without any significant atypia. There's no destructive invasion into the ducts or epidermis. It is poorly circumscribed and often has, as you can see here, some keratin-filled cysts near the surface. Um, so for IHC, because there can be both glandular and squamous cells, it can be variable, but the dominant cell cells stain with P63 and high molecular weight cytokeratins with variable myoepithelial marker staining, and mostly ER HER2 negative. All right, last but not least, smolt. Not like embers smolting, but squamous metaplasia of the lactiferous ducts. So you'll remember the body does not like keratin when it's in the dermis you're gonna have clogging. And because the body does not like keratin, it's like a foreign substance. It will be an inflammatory infiltrate with foreign body giant cell reaction, extruded keratin, 
and possible abscess formation. Uh, it's highly associated with smoking, and in order for this to resolve, because it can recur, you have to um, excise the duct, and it may occur at any age. So this is another example of smold. All right, well, thank you 